Welcome to the channel, Josh Gordon Music. We're going to look at the Boss Tone Studio for the GT1 Guitar Effects Processor. I know there's been many videos about this, but here's my walkthrough. I recently got this not that long ago, and I'm blown away by this little unit. So I decided to, um, you know, investigate their desktop editing software because the unit itself is pretty easy to manipulate and maneuver. Um, manually, um, you know, and that's a good skill to have when you're on the gig. But I, if you're like me, you like a desktop editor because you're in your home studio, you know, you take the time to craft your presets. And I do that with any modeler that I, that has this capability. So let's have, let's just dive right in. So I've got my, um, I call it my studio rig drive. So this is my dirt sound and I have a studio clean and I have a live rig and then there's a whole bunch of other, I guess the, there were presets either made by the previous owner or they were just factory ones that weren't touched anyways let's look at this tone studio and let's start here so i always look for when i'm in a desktop editing um situation i always look at the top left and you know the, you have the usual things here hiding quitting the file edit window i don't think these are going to really matter much so let's get right into it here so you have your you know your preset title the tempo that would be for your um drum loops a right button so that's when any changes that you make you're going to hit the right button and you're going to this screen's going to pop up and I, I guess you can classify these here within certain categories which you know if you're like me this isn't really going to matter I, I'm sure it'll matter to some, doesn't matter to me, but uh, definitely writing and saving it matters. So we'll hit OK. And it's going to do its little thing there. And <laughs> bear with me, folks. I won't do this for the whole video there. So now you're saved. OK, so that's the basic, you know, simple saving feature. But let's take a look at the left here. I won't go to the news, but you have a couple of uh tabs or sorry not tabs but uh button options here you have your 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 edit one and your librarian one so when you're in your editor you have all you know all your patches here so there's my uh my clean one i have a, i have one for live so let's go back to the studio rig so you have all that now down here is tone central where you can you know here, here's gonna pop up uh like artist artist uh I guess uh, patches that you you can import into your into your uh, unit, which is great. I won't do that right now, so let's minimize that. So you have that. So your big screen here is basically your layout of all the effects here. And one thing you can do now: the buttons on the unit itself are laid out in a certain order, but you don't have to have that order here. So you can actually click on on the uh, effect and you see you see that red line that starts hovering you can move the effect so for example the only thing i moved was the noise gate i like having the noise gate at the start so there there's something you can do so you can move this anywhere in the chain bingo so you have you i won't go through each little effect but you have all your effects here now you have your master output so this is basically going to it's like a global control you know, for your EQs, and it looks like you have a BPM for drum machines and, and a key. F so there's a lot of great stuff here. And your output selection is important too, because when you're using it, like in this situation, I'm going into my interface, into the computer, you're gonna want the line phones. But if you're um, using this with say a real amplifier, you know, you can you have these options. So like I use a tube combo amp, my gig so when i'm using this i would use the combo amp and uh, you could use the stack amp too which sounds great but you have these these kind of nice little um features there and there's a clear button so if you hit the clear button you can you know you can temp temporary i guess clear clear all all uh, the settings that you've done so let's cancel that so there's a nice feature there and i like this setup too this is this is the pedal view now that you have these little buttons so you have pedal view you have a list view and then you can have a view for all like a, i guess controller and expression settings but let's start with the pedal view so you can go you know it's, it's almost like you're you're tweaking a pedal 
on your screen, which is very cool. I think that's very neat. So you can actually, you know, dial it from here to here if you want that way. Or you can use this little slider to drag stuff, however you like it. Um, and you can go into these individual boxes with these up and down arrows and you can go and, and adjust things that way. So that's pretty cool. Um, that is a great feature to have. So you know what? I'm going to play you this preset that I have too. So this is my studio rig. <laughs> I'm digging the sound of it. So you you have many options of how to tweak stuff. So you, if you feel like you want to turn some knobs, that's great. You want to do a slider, you have that option. Or if you just like, you know, you can you can even go in here and type what you want, or you can use up and down arrow keys. So there's four ways to change your parameters for each effect, and I think that's fantastic. So that's the pedal view. If you want to go pedal by pedal. You know, if you just want to hone in on one of them. Now, if you want the whole layout of your preset, you can go to this list view and it's got all your effects, you know, as laid out up here in the top panel. And now you have them down here and you can tweak that way. So it's almost like you're you're, you're having it in a, in a pedal board setting. Um, have I used this much? I haven't used this much, but I, I definitely prefer pedal by pedal setting. But this is this is a great um, option. And then you have control expression where you can further assign, you know, for your control controller uh, one button, the CTL one button, you have that. Um, and now you're getting into like if you're going to add expression pedal, you have your expression one, but then you can add um, you know, I think it's the FS7 switch so that you could, you know, you can assign control two, control three. So you could further control more effects in your chain if you wanted to do that. And then you have these assign buttons and then you're up and down. Um, you can have like, because you, you have a down, you have an up and you have a CTL one. Those are the buttons on the unit itself. So you can, you can control them that way. And yeah, definitely you got you, you got your drop down menus for for those parameters. And then when you go to a pedal or or even the amp, if we I have to go back to the pedal view, you go to the amp. So yeah, you, uh, this is an effects one. And then yeah, you have nice drop down menus, plenty of plenty of drop down menus for different um, parameters and settings and effects. So I think it's a great desktop editor now i you know this channel is mainly a pod go channel i really really like that editor i find how it's laid out on the screen is fantastic this is this is definitely interesting as well you know and i what i what i like most about this is the pedal view um the other two options like the list and the controller expression they're great too but i kind of like because this is different than other desktop editors, I, li I like that I, I'm, I'm, it's almost like I'm tweaking a pedal. And let's not forget, folks, down here at the bottom. The bottom right, you have a tuner. I think that's self-explanatory. So that's great. You have a play. Here, and, and that, I believe, is you can import some music. I haven't done that yet because I don't usually use that function, but that's a great little feature. You can import some some uh, songs that you want to practice along to. And then you have a system button here, obviously for, you know, global controls for the Tone Studio Editor. So as we look through here, yeah, you can have your levels, your loop, your loop levels. Wow, and preferences, knob settings. Yeah, so the, you have everything you need in the editor. Okay, so the final thing is going to librarian. So this is where you can create, I, they call it live sets. 
So to be honest, I'm still not, I'm learning this unit. I'm not a fully um, versed in all of its functions, but this looks like where you can, you know, import, export. Like if you have, if you want to do a, um, you want to export a, or a preset, you can do it here. Or if you want to import, say, say you've built, say a series of patches for a gig, right? So this is, this is where this can come in handy. But say you have another gig, a different type of gig, like it's a, you know, you're doing a rock band one night or a country band the next night, and you have a whole different slew of presets. Well, this is something that you can use to import that and have it all set up in your GT1. All right, and there's a backup feature. Show memo. Well, you know, you have all these little, these little features are great. But for me, it would be, oh there's the import feature so yeah if you have a live set or something there you want to import this is the place to do it now i find on sort of other editors it's a little more easier to uh import and export like say you just want one preset um i'll use podgo as an example i find that way easier to import and export if i just want one file but at least there is the capability here in the tone studio well that's my um walkthrough for the boss tone studio for gt1 i hope you found some value out of it uh, if you like the video give it a like don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video